Hey everybody. Welcome back. Oh no, we're being shot. Okay, well, the Sierra screen's safe, thank god. But it's time for some more police quest. Which, actually, this game is considered Police Quest V a SWAT in a lot of things, particularly the executables in the original releases, so we are on Police Quest V. So yeah, this is Daryl F. Gates' SWAT, which Daryl F. Gates is actually the creator of the current type of SWAT, that's why he was used with this, but uh, an interesting game. Many people hate this game. Uh, as a kid, it frustrated the hell out of me. I never could beat the old lady at the beginning without getting reprimanded. <laughs> I could beat it, but I'd never win. <clears throat> so, really great game. At, at, like, I actually like it a lot more now than I did as a kid. Uh, fun fact, this game is a million seller. So, if people uh, act like it, it's Welcome not much of anything, officer. they're wrong. Formed in 1967, the Special Weapons and Tactics Team of the Los Angeles Police Department has held a preeminence within the field of law enforcement and has been the standard bearer for domestic specialized tactical units throughout the world. We are an organization steeped in tradition and pride, where individuals are frequently called upon to perform at levels far above the norm. There have been and ever will be certain guiding principles that have provided the foundation for the high level of professionalism exemplified by this organization and its members. Commit them to memory. All right, so we are the SWAT pup. <laughs> that is our name. Welcome to D Platoon, officer. I'm Sergeant Rooker. While you're assigned to D Platoon, I'll be your supervisor. Your new position here is that of an assaulter. This is Officer Packmeyer, and he's your element leader. For the record, Officer Packmeyer has been an element leader in D Platoon for eight years. He's a wealth of information, Officer. Learn from him. Thank you, Sergeant. Hello. Officer, I'd like you to give some thought to what I'm about to say. You are now one of 60 tactical officers within D Platoon. We constitute less than 1% of the entire Los Angeles police force. Your selection and admittance to this platoon is something to be proud of and respected. As a member of SWAT, you are responsible to meet the requirements of specific tactical criteria and will be tested regularly. Anytime you should fail to meet these requirements, you will be encouraged to train up. Remember, your level of physical fitness, your firearm proficiency, and your understanding of tactics affects the entire team, and the team concept is what we're all about here. There's no hot shots, no loose cannons. We train as one. We work as one, and we resolve conflicts as one. Do you understand, officer? I sure There's do. No room for grandstanding. Lives are on the line. The lives of police officers, your fellow teammates, innocent citizens, and yes, even suspects. And trust me, it's easy to f this Lest game you up forget, hard. Officer, D Platoon is a life-saving organization. This is just as bad as if Jim Walls was in charge. We the regulations of the Los Angeles Police Department and to the laws of the United States of America. And while you're a member of SWAT, you will remember to live up to our standards, regulations, and laws. You will behave as a gentleman, an officer, and if necessary, a gunfighter. Officer Packmeyer now has a few things to say to you as well. Officer Packmeyer. As Sergeant said, we're a team here. For us, trust is more than a word. It's a way of life, a vow we make to one another. When called upon in a crisis, I trust you will do your job. I trust you will have honed your skills and will be prepared. I trust you will be brave, but not foolish. I trust that when I give an order, you will follow it. I trust that when you tell me you can accomplish something, you will. Around here, we're cross-trained. Some of us are lead climbers and assaulters. Others are negotiators and assaulters. You're entering D platoon as an assaulter. We have a sniper position open. So if you're interested, I suggest you train up and then let me or sergeant know you'd like a shot at the position. If you have Sir, to do that, one of the stages is sniper-based. 
Officer, I suggest you become familiar with your new surroundings and your newly issued weapons. I also encourage you to review the educational material the department has made available. We have a training detail later at the academy range. Be there. Until then, get settled and learn what you can. One of the things this game was praised for was just what they're talking about. Like, the information was, like, great. So this also, if you have played Police Quest 4 or watched us play it, a lot of this should be very familiar to you. Because it's a lot of the same caliber, areas. 1911 government model mm -hmm. sidearm. So we have to go do our firearms MP5, training. MP5 9 mm submachine gun. The ultimate close quarter battle weapon. Yeah, the MP5 is a pretty darn good weapon. Every officer in D platoon is issued and trained on the MP5 submachine gun. It is the assaulter's primary weapon. The MP5 is the undisputed close quarter submachine gun choice for vast numbers of law enforcement agencies and military special ops units for some of the following reasons. This select fire submachine gun, chambered for pistol size 9mm cartridges, is accurate, lightweight and fast. With its 30 round magazine, the MP5 can fire 800 rounds per minute. High accuracy is a result of a fixed barrel and the MP5 weighs a mere 5 pounds unloaded. The MP5 is a Class 3 National Firearms Act weapon. It can be sold and owned only by law enforcement agencies and the military. So our big thing now is to, if you've played the other <coughs> uh, Police Quest games, you do have to do some training, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to the small arms range. You have to do a little bit of this. You have to get Heads some up, information. Gentlemen. We have a new member in the element. Until formal introductions can be made, you may refer to him as the SWAT pup. Welcome aboard, officer. I'm 30 David, Sergeant Paulden. We were just about to do a few drills with the MP5. Step up to alley 13, seven yard line and join us. Yes, sir. So just like Police Quest 2, you can do training like this. But you have to. You have to do Officers one of these with your MP5s. Make and ready. then one training to get the first of the uh, fights to come up in this game. Officers, come to your guard. Single to the head, semi-auto. Single to the head, semi-auto. On the whistle. And On guard. Yep, that's all you gotta do. And it will put you through a various amounts of drill and things like that. To, it, it never really did much for me in the game. It's just doing the realistic part of being a SWAT member. You, know, you don't just go around doing Officers, missions and whatnot. Most of what they do Failure is drill. Two shots to the body. One to training the head. and preparing to do their best. Two so there's the a body. whole lot that goes Single on to the with head. this. Semi-auto. On the whistle. And, you know, as a kid, I actually really, really enjoyed this. I've always tried to, like, get faster and faster times and stuff during this point. And it's all a lot easier to reload in this version than in Police Quest 2 where you had to, you know, type it in and everything else and go get more. You can only have a certain amount of ammunition at one time. Obviously, we were also only using our Officers, Beretta pistol in that game, guard. not an MP5. Failure drill. Two shots to the body. One to the head. Semi-auto. Well, Two to with the, the failure drill, Single to the head. that person's dead. On the whistle. <clears throat> on guard. And this goes on quite a while. Like, if you stay there long enough, it'll go into pistol and shotgun and other things like that that you can do and train with. So, we do this long enough to kind of make the game realize we've trained so that we can Officers, go into our second training so we can go to our Failure first drill. actual mission. Two shots to the body, one to the head, semi-auto. Two to the body, single to the head, semi-auto. On the whistle. <laughs> on guard. And if you look on, on like our little screen, there's like a, over by the control panel, there's a little alarm. That'll tell you when like <clears throat> a mission comes up. And you will get the same missions Officers, more than once. come to your guard. Failure drill. Two shots to the body. One to the head. I think the one time I actually beat the first Two mission, to the body. then it to sent the me head. back. I thought that I had failed. On the whistle. <laughs> On guard. Because I know most people did not get past that first mission.
Just, I know. <clears throat> Excuse me. I threw a flashbang to try Officers, to. Officers, like, come to your guard. Bail your drill. Two shots. Should be knocked to the body, out. You can deal head. with it. You know, get her out of there. And it kills Two her. To the body. <laughs> and then to the you head. get Semi put in for first degree murder. On the whistle. So it's like, oh. No flashbangs on the elderly. On guard. Put them on safe and let them hang. We're in the middle of our drills, officer. Socializing can wait. Keep your mind focused. You don't want to shoot somebody. Officers with your sidearms. Make ready. Yep. All right, so it's sidearms time. Officers, we hold don't your need fire. to do that. We have a quitter in the group. I remember as a kid, I thought when he says we have a quitter in the group that we hadn't done enough, and it's just saying, oh, well, no, he's done. He's going to something else. We'll get started when everyone's here, which would appear to be now. Everyone, your attention, please. Settle down and we can get started. Settle down. Today, we okay. want to discuss use of force issues, cover the differences between stealth and dynamic entries, and review tactical communication techniques. Are we clear, or are there any questions? We still have those TVs at my like school I teach at. They've almost gotten rid of them all. Sir, I haven't been on a call-up before. What should I expect? Little old ladies to murder you. First, each call-up we answer is unique to the situation at hand. No two encounters will ever be exactly alike. However, each situation will share certain characteristics. The negotiation process, well, you'd better be paying attention to what he tells you during this part. Scouting the area for possible approach you will routes, fail if you interviewing don't. victims, neighbors, and witnesses. Structures will share features such as entry ports, single or multiple levels, what we cannot plan for is how any suspect will behave. Remember two things. It is the suspect who determines the outcome of any given situation. And there is never just one way to resolve a crisis. So, how can we truly be prepared? Well, for one thing, we can train using proven tactics and procedures. Any questions so far? Yep. Sergeant Rooker? Uh, what type of situation does D Platoon normally encounter? Over 60% of all our call-ups are barricaded suspects. Out of that, approximately 80% of the barricaded suspects will be a domestic barricade of a single male. Soured robberies, hostage taking, and multiple barricaded suspects make up the remaining 20%. Now, any time you have one or multiple barricaded suspects, time is on your side. Negotiation is key. Time becomes crucial when hostages are involved or the threat to innocent citizens is imminent. If negotiations break down or if the life of an innocent citizen or police officer is in jeopardy during a barricaded situation, we must be prepared to initiate a tactical plan to enter the structure. Entering a structure can be one of the most hazardous times during an assault. You want a plan for high ground cover and you want to enter the structure to your advantage. Now to do this, we always scout the area for an approach route. We also determine what type of entry we'd prefer to make, whether that would be a dynamic entry or a stealth entry. Dynamic entries are fast and are characterized by the use of diversionary devices and techniques. The entry team can be assisted by one or more gas teams. Flashbangs are used. This is a lot of footage of from actual SWAT from that era. Or as a diversionary tool at separate entry ports. Stealth entries are referred to as soft probes. They're characterized by slow, cautious movement. The first person on the entry team is the scout. The scout is armed with a 180 degree mirror and a 45. The mirror provides a reverse image of the room you're about to enter. The door jam will give you your point of reference. Remember, the proper way to mirror a door is to first mirror low and then mirror high. You mirror low first because the suspect in the next room is generally not looking at floor level. He's generally looking at his eye level. The scout will inform the rest of the entry team of what to expect. Door right, closet left. This information is relayed via your LASH radio unit. Now this LASH, that's the, the problem in this game. The covered by the second man on the entry Screwed team, me up so bad guard. as a kid. The rear guard carries a shotgun. 
The shotgun will be loaded with buckshot unless a door or a car needs to be breached. At such times, the shotgun is loaded with one ounce, 12 gauge slugs. Now next up behind the rear guard is your element leader. Your element leader should be an assaulter's main focus. You do as he instructs. If your element leader tells you to cover a door, you cover that door. You do not second guess your element leader. The scout, rear guard, and element leader will continue to soft probe the environment, placing trailers where needed. Remember, survey thread areas, determine what needs to be covered, clear rooms in a circular or L patterns. Questions? Well, I mean, yes. Are there certain room entry techniques we should employ? Is there an owl going to be anywhere near Whether here that I may shoot? Whether you enter a room under a dynamic or a stealth mode, you want to remember to invoke certain practices. Where's Keith during all this? Always slice the pie on a door or a room. In other words, don't rush straight into any room. If you do, you're rushing head on into you're, trouble. You're dead By in this game if you don't pie, slice the pie. You're angling your position to first see what the room contains, then roll out if necessary. Rolling out or leaning without exposing any more of your body than you need to to see further into a room is a life-saving tactic. It's not a And finale. I never got that Next, as a 13-year-old. I just ahead of wouldn't you slice the, the pie and, and would be dead. Right, then you enter to the left. If you follow their path into a room, you will be in their field of fire. Lastly, if a suspect sees you on a room entry before the entry team is ready to make an arrest, or if a sniper misses this shot, the mission is compromised. Alert others of the compromise by broadcasting the word compromised. Any questions? Where'd Keith go? Where's the cigarettes? Yeah, is there a specific set of codes we should use, like the APCO code or radio call letters for communicating during a call-up? No, you use hand signals. Communication well, is key this. to our success as a team. Consequently, agreed upon terminology exists in this organization. And I expect all of you to understand and utilize this terminology. When observing and relaying information concerning a structure, you will refer to it by numbers, not geographical designations. The front of the building is always side one. Moving clockwise, the numbers increase, two, three, four, etc. Corners are referred to by their intersecting sides. In the example I have here, you can see the bottom left corner is referred to as the 1-2 corner. So remember, the front of the building is always side 1, and you move clockwise and number accordingly. Now here we have a four-story building. The concept of numbering still applies. Numbers are assigned to all openings and all levels. You have to know Each this stuff. They're not numbered, kidding. Beginning from the left to the right, bottom to the top. You have to be able to tell the folks Each with the last units from the bottom how up. to do it. Consequently, and where you are if you need help. Here, the door would be referred to as level one, opening two. If you have suspect information to relay, you will do so by using this technique. Is that clear? Yeah. During a you tactical have asked another operation, question there. we communicate two ways through LASH radio headsets and hand signals. The LASH radio headset functions by capturing the vibrations from your throat. You're going to want to whisper when using the LASH. Anything louder than a whisper will cause distortion and jeopardize our communication. Verbal communication should be kept brief, lest a suspect hears you. If you need a trailer to enter a room and cover a cleared area, you need only say, trailer, cover window, nothing more. The trailer will come to you and set up on the window. If you're sniper team number one and you've arrived at your position, the simple sentence, high ground one in position, will do. Us brass will know what you're up to. The other method of communication that we utilize is from the military, and it's used internationally. It's the use of hand signals. Now these are basic, but for those of you needing a refresher course, a raised fist means hold. Do not move. Moving your hand horizontally over your head means cover. A raised fist moved in an up and down motion means hurry up. A hand with spread fingers indicates suspect. The direction you point indicates where the suspect is. If you need someone's attention, snap your fingers. Or if you see or hear snapping, someone wants your attention. 
And when someone has your attention, if they point to their eyes and then to a door, they want you to look at the door or in the direction of the door. If you see a thumbs up, you know an area is clear and it's safe to enter. If you see a flat hand, do not continue with your action or movement. Stop. In the All name very basic of hand love. movements, but gestures that can save your life and the lives of your teammates. <laughs> now, I know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's tempting to add an additional middle finger into our repertoire. That'd be but fun. I would ask you to curb that temptation and behave professionally. Don't well, go fuck it. you, Grandma. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Dismissed. <clears throat> And now that we have done this, we can start getting calls. And there comes our first call. Please insert CD number two, then press enter to continue. Okay. Hey, it's, uh, that was Princess Barricaded Vattler, female, North Hollywood Queen area, Valenice. 339 Westcott Avenue. Shots fired, code three. This is Sergeant Pruitt with the LAPD. Lucy, if you can hear me, I want you to answer the telephone. We're here to help you. Please pick up the telephone and talk with me. It's my wife, Lucy. Lucy Long. She's holed up in the house. She won't come out, won't let me in. Like I told that other officer, she's been mixed up a lot lately. Ain't that so, Katie? This is my daughter, Katie. Go ahead, honey. Tell the officer. My mom's always been real protective of our family, but it's different now. It's like she's, she's waving just a protective. gun around and going crazy and going, she's I need that owl gone. Why is there an owl at my I house? I think she's she keeps talking dangerous. about King's she Quest. I don't even now, like she King's shot Quest. At me and my dad this morning. That's right. And she damn near killed us, too. See, yesterday, she threw me out she's of the house. She's a fan of King's Quest. she weren't going to let me back in. She locked all the doors. Neighbors across the street were looking. So I, I walked down to Katie's. She just lives in the apartments over on Moroa. So I spent the night there. This morning, Katie brung me back home. We was walking up to the house, and Lucy started shooting at us. That's when I called the police. I, I didn't do it when there was the first problem happened. I waited this long. I understand, sir. We'd like for your wife to come out on her own so we can get her some help. But if she won't, and the possibility exists she might hurt herself, well, we might have to go in and get her. I was just briefing Mr. Long on the possibility that we might have to enter his home. Mr. Long, our crisis negotiation team is currently on a telephone with your wife. There's some concern that she may be delusional. Now, I realize I've already asked you to explain the physical layout of your house and property, but in case we need to go in and get her, I want to make sure that we're prepared. Is there anything else that you can tell me about the house's layout? Well, of course, you've seen the boards in the front windows. She's got all the windows boarded up like that. Huh. See what you can learn from the Longs and Avers. Okay, we'll do that. Hello, you must be the neighbor. Yes, I'm Mr. Devon. I've been living across from the Longs for the last 10 years. When I first moved in, they were real nice. I don't know if you're from California or not, sir. Showed me and my wife the neighborhood. Uh, hadn't been the same in the last few years. You know the wife, Lucy? She beats that old man real bad. All day long. You cops been out here. I'm getting to know you guys on a first name basis. So she's abusive and crazy. Have you ever That's actually been good. inside the, the long residence, Mr. Devon? Not in a long time. Lucy boards it up bit by bit. She thinks some people are going to kill her. You know what I think? I think she's gonna kill that old man. Maybe herself. Yep, and that's where we're gonna leave off for today. And when we come back, we will go <laughs> and surprisingly do very well with the, the Lucy battle, which as a child, uh, 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 no. Like I said, many people, that was the end of their SWAT playing, was the Lucy battle, so... In the next episode, we will try to save Lucy, so stay tuned for episode two of Police Quest SWAT. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Hey, everybody, welcome back to SWAT. What can you tell me about what happened here today? Did that you, lady went crazy is what happened. Heard shots at the police officers. She was screaming about car. some owl. I knew it had to be the law. Said she had to kill it. I agreed. Then I heard the shots. 
So yeah, she's definitely got a screw loose. Is there anything else you can tell me, Mr. Devine? Don't believe the old man. He tell you that his missus is holed up in that house. It won't come out. But that's not the truth. I've seen her wandering around the yard at all times of the night and day. Half the time it's some old night guy. So is he wanting us to like kill her or something? That's interesting that he'd be lying Excuse about me. that. Hello. Bob Lewis, Hollywood Division. We've been called out here to the Longs before for domestic disputes. The husband calls us out, but uh, refuses to press charges against his wife. We found him with bruises to his face and arms. When we questioned Mrs. Long in the past, she seemed off balance, but never threatening. We referred them both to social services for counseling, but uh, nothing's ever come of it. Social people kept saying that this owl does not exist that's causing her to go crazy. Excuse me. How you doing? I'm Sergeant Pete Monroe. I wasn't going to pay My attention partner, to you, officer but you Lewis and I are the responding officers. When we arrived, we found Mr. Long quite agitated, and when questioned, he stated... He was shot at. I would imagine he'd be agitated. Residence. His wife opened the door and fired a twenty-two pistol at them. He said she fired four or five rounds, all misses. He then came across the street okay. to Mr. Devon's so residence. So thinking of <laughs> this game as a kid. That's where the 911 call was placed. Mm. She has a 22. We have on body armor. And she can't shoot the broad How side of a barn. Okay. So unless How she shot doing? us in the face. This is your first How do you call die up, so it? much in this first mission? Well, don't sweat it. Just uh, do your job. No heroics. How you doing? Good. You'll do fine. Don't worry. Just listen to Packmeyer. You like the music. Ding da ding. Hey. Hey. Don't bother Since me. Since this is your first time out, a little advice for you. Do don't as get you're us told. killed. Do as you're told and don't get and slice the pie. Remember to slice that pie. Hey. How you doing, pup? Don't worry about name. this one. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> I was on the scout with Pac Meyer and Rooker. There are limited ports of entry, and those that are there are pretty well boarded up. I think we have a captive audience. Who knows? Maybe she'll come out on her own. Yeah. Easy. <clears throat> of course, we're gonna make it look easy. But, uh, Excuse me, sir. most people, Did this was not easy. Yes, sir. Good. We'll be briefing in a few minutes. You can share the information you have at that time. Briefing! The situation as we know it is this. We have a barricaded white female inside the residence. She's 64 years old and she suffers from various health maladies. She's diabetic and she suffers from a heart condition that requires the use of medication. CNT tells me she's delusional. She thinks the activity outside the house are gangbangers trying to break in. She's a shooter. Approach knowing she's armed and dangerous. This is the layout of the house. On side one, we have a front door entrance. This is a dangerous approach as it has two windows to contend with. Yeah, you're gonna die a if you go in that way. A front window and a small kitchen window. To compensate for that, we've placed snipers here on this side of the street to watch those ports. Apparently, this house has been somewhat fortified over the years. The garage has been sealed off from the house. Side three has one opening, a barricaded window. While negotiations continue with the suspect, we're going to place an emergency assault team on side one for entry through opening two. The emergency entry team will consist of the following. Rhea, scout. Denton, rear guard. Packmire, element lead. For rear containment, side three, Pup and Wixel. Any questions? This is a soft probe. I want stealth movement. This changes only if the situation changes. Did you have an opportunity to speak to the neighbor? Yes, he said that Mrs. Long is a little more violent than what her husband would lead us to believe. You and Dent on her side three. But be aware, there's a lot of foliage back there. And you won't have the benefit of sniper coverage. Which is another way to get you killed easy. Remember, all of you, just because the suspect is a female does not mean she's any less violent than a male. Just because she's 64 does not mean she's a sweet old lady. Approach this suspect with caution. She'll F you up. It's kind of waiting for you to ask questions if you really had any, but... 
I will tell you, this lady, you know, when she has the heart condition, you can't use flashbangs. Here we go. Let's... Sounds like the fat's in the fire. Line up for deployment. Let's go. Boy, I remember hearing that over and over and over playing this game. <clears throat> MP5s, full auto. That's right, we're going in on this little old lady with f f fully automatic MP5s. But that's not really what you should be doing. We, we do Ready? not want to be going... Go! ...inside. There's other things you can do. We want to be going around to side three. Yeah, they're wanting our attention. Okay. Yeah, she's right there. So, if you don't slice the pie, she'll kill you. See, instead of you just going straight over there, it gives you a look and lets her get away. Pop, what's happening? Is the gate locked? So this is what is important use of the lash. Ram on one two corner. I like how he does try to look and see if there is, like, an easily accessible hat on the other side. Like, that we wouldn't have done that, you know. <clears throat> but we also weren't covered, so I could see why they would wait for cover to do that. But let's bring in the battering ram. Time to get this old lady. Ready to hit the gate? Hit it. I'll tell you, they did a really nice job with the FMV, with the real-life stuff mixed in. It, it looks pretty good. It still does look pretty good. You can get killed here really easy. If you forget to slice the pie, <clears throat> you're dead. Or you have to shoot her, which is not what you want, because you... You're not going to get what you need out of this if you shoot her. And definitely if you cause her to have a heart attack and die. Yeah, there she is. Lucy, this is the police. We've come to talk to you. Lucy, this is the police. We're here to help you. Now stop. Stop. Put your hands where I can see them good. This is the police. We just want to talk to you. Now keep your hands up. There you go. Just keep your hands where I can see them. Nobody's going to hurt you. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, now nobody's going to hurt you. I just want you to walk with me over here, okay? Let's go. Let's walk. Yep, and there you go. Nobody's going to hurt you. It's amazing to think that you can beat this in like three minutes when it took me... Side over most of my childhood control. thing, even Officers to figure it out. The girl goes running to get shot. <clears throat> All right, everyone, take a seat. We're, we're seated, Before I man. get started, Lieutenant Hancock has a few things to say. Sir? Congratulations, officers. You did an excellent job today. Thanks to your efforts, we have our suspect in custody. Keep up the good work. Sergeant Rooker. You men did a fine job out there today. Take pride in your efforts. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a commendation or two headed this way. Well, that's it. Get some rest. Dismissed. And you do not need to, re to replay. We've done it. <clears throat> We're good. Please insert CD number one, then press enter to continue. And help me find my poor, my poor Rosella. Ready All to right, open everybody. Door. We're gonna put in a uh, another way to go through this mission here. 
through the actual house, which I used to get put in a lot as a kid, and it would just Ready wipe, to enter door. wipe me out. Never could figure out how to get her to do what you need her to do. <laughs> I love how aggravated he is. We barely started. Go. If you go too soon, you get wiped out. You gotta be careful. There's specific things that your squad has to do. Entry point clear. Trailer! Kitchen door! So you can see a lot of the things they were talking about in the interview process with how it's been barricaded up through the windows and it's dilapidated quite a bit. The goal of this one is she's in the bathroom and you gotta get in there without getting blown away. You can get your officers killed in this too quite easily. Your poor guy up front there. I've watched him die in this many a time, followed by us. I've said numerous times in this game how much I really enjoy the music, and it's just no exception. It, it fits the mood quite well. Pup, you cover Carmichael. Yeah, he's checking under the bed. We kind of, at this point, know where she's got to be. Michael, pull back. Pup, move in. I'm covering you. Here we go. Lucy? It's the police. Lucy, are you in here? Lucy! She's in the shower. You can screw up here, so you want to get their attention and tell them the suspect's here. Pup, what Quickly. Is it? You don't want to wait. She'll shoot you. Lucy, we're the police. Keep your hands where we can see them. We're here to help you. We want you to come out. No one's going to... And, yep, there we go. She's out. everyone take a seat we're seated before I get started lieutenant Hancock has a few things to say sir congratulations officers you did an excellent job today thanks to your efforts we have our suspect in custody keep up the good work nobody Dr. died you men did a fine job out there today take pride in your efforts I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a accommodation or two headed this way well that's it get some rest dismissed woohoo So there's more that has to be done before the next one will come. Hold 45. So we have to come back and do some fun here. Got to do more training. Hello. Hey, Packmeyer. We're working on the Presidente drill. Three targets, multiple engagements. You're going to want to shoot the first target once, the second target once, third target twice, second target once, first target once. Speed load, then you do it all again. Part time is 10 seconds. You up for it? Come on, let's give it a try. Stuff to do with the mouse. <clears throat> with 45s, make ready and try. The Presidente drill is up. There are three targets and multiple engagements. Starting from either the left or the right, shoot the first target once, 
second target once, third target twice, second target once, and first target once. Speed load, boom, then do boom, it all boom, again. Boom, 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 boom. Par time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. This is the combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets, all bad guys. Reload as necessary. No par time. This is a reflex drill. On the whistle. Now, if you've ever seen uh, the second Dirty Harry movie, Magnum Force, which in my opinion is the best Dirty Harry, they do a whole lot with this, particularly <clears throat> with the uh, young cops. They have a whole part in the movie with like doing these drills. Mostly to show how good they were. But, really good movie. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. I know when I <clears throat> went and got my concealed weapon permit, mostly just to make sure I could safely fire this a weapon. This is a dozier drill. Engage each of the five They did a lot of stuff. Not like fall. this, but a lot of Reload different types of Par time is five distant seconds. shootings and things On like that. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. That's always the one I was Make the best ready. at playing this as a kid. I could do that. And I played these a lot because half the time I would get killed by that first lady. The Presidente drill is up. There are three targets and multiple engagements. Starting from either the left or the right, shoot the first target once, second target once, third target twice, second target once, and first target once. Speed load, then do it all again. Par time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. <coughs> I know that's one of the big things people do complain about this game, but... It's this fun. As long as you don't have to Engage keep replaying a bunch poppers of the stages they over. Fall. Reload is necessary. Par time is 5 seconds. On the whistle. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. And it's kind of always a random amount. It's like, when should you leave? Have you done enough? Things like that. <clears throat> this is the combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets. All and bad I don't guys. know if, how many of you have actually played this and have the no game. This not got it off GOG or something, but... On the whistle. I remember the book that came with this game was so big, the manual with all the stuff on how to do it and history of the SWAT and LAPD things and the guns and proper procedure. I remember sitting there reading about wind distances and things for sniper rifles and going, oh my gosh. Officers, guns at low ready. Prepare to commence firing. Make ready. It's one of the reasons my mom and dad would buy me some of these games more than like a console game. Because they're like, well, he's learning from this at least. This is a dozier. Like, like <coughs> the same year, I think I got Civil War Generals. Until they fall. Reload is and necessary. I think Sim City. Part time uh, is five seconds. CD ROM version from Interplay. Whistle? Which, if you've never played that version with the FMVs, it's wild. I've tried to get it to work, <clears throat> but I cannot. I'd love to get it to work. And I'm sorry for the cough. I is up. can't help it. There are three targets and multiple engagements. This is the only the time I have to record, right. so of course when First I did, target once, is when I get second sick. Second target once, third target twice, second target once, and first target once. Speed load, then do it all again. Par time is 10 seconds. On the whistle. Well, you can speed load a lot faster on this game than in real life, so you just have to click on the thing and it magically reloads. <clears throat> like... You're not going to have to drop that thing out. It's just automatically reloaded. This is the <clears throat> combat drill. There will be multiple moving targets. All bad guys. Reload as necessary. No par time. This is a reflex drill. On the whistle. Can I have a... A 
Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and it can blow your head clean off. That's what I'd like to have. And I know a lot of people complain about SWAT 2 as well. I actually liked SWAT 2 a lot. I was not very good at it. But I did like it. Officers, it's guns more of a strategy-based game. Prepare to commence firing. <clears throat> Make ready. And you can play as Sonny Bonds in that one. Even though he was in Lytton. Not. <laughs> in, Remember, uh, as you train, LA. so shall you fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had st you can stay the whole, whole time, obviously, and do a whole bunch of stuff, but we're Hello. not doing that. I'm JD. JD Saunders. I bet you're the new guy from Rooker's Squad. Yeah, I'm interested in learning to shoot. That's great. Because I'm the odd man out. I'm the sniper without a partner. Without a partner? Yeah. All snipers are paired up. While one's on the rifle, the other one serves as an observer. You're interested in learning to sharpshoot. All right, come on. I'll show you around. I know my dad, um, had he not had Gold glasses. 45 caliber 1911 government model he sidearm. Was, he was sniper based CCI from the military during the Vietnam era. ACP jacketed hollow Luckily for him, arrow. where he wore glasses, they wouldn't use him. Winchester 230 grain <laughs> so military ball full metal jacket. So I'm here, because I probably wouldn't have been. Robar SR-60 308 sniper rifle. Yeah, it's 30 out 6 it's going to put the mess out of you. The 308 sniper rifle is engineered in Phoenix, Arizona by Robar companies for distances up to 600 yards, though most police snipers would not generally fire at a target past 400 yards. According to FBI statistics, the national law enforcement average for target engagement is 71 yards. Along with D Platoon, the SR-60 308 sniper rifle is used by various law enforcement agencies throughout North America, including Phoenix PD SWAT and the Arizona Department of Public Safety. <coughs> Insert CD number three, then press enter to continue. Rosella. Officer down, 612 Haley, Central Area, Ooh. Code 3. Not good. Where do you want to, start? You need to get into a car, travel across the railroad tracks, and set up across the way. The east side of the building faces the train tracks. That's where the entrance is. I need you to provide cover for the entry team. Your Sierra 1. Contact me as soon as you're in position. Right. Sergeant Rooker. What's the situation? We're not sure yet. Officers Tobin and Bale from Central were answering a Code 30 Adam. The officers approached the warehouse and found the front entrance door open. As they were entering the building, they were fired upon. Bale was shot in the face. Oh. Tobin apparently grabbed Bale, dragged him around to the back of the building, and called for assistance. By the time assistance arrived, the firing from within had subsided. Bale's en route to the hospital, and Tobin's standing by to provide information. We're hearing random shots fired. We've set up communications <coughs> in the ICE building. The owner's here. Come on. Well, so we've got a cop shooter. Well, of course. I don't want any more damage to occur than already has. Uh, Mrs. Schneibly, this is Sergeant Rooker. Or would you mind repeating to him what you just I don't, told me? This is such an inconvenience yes, to Hello, me. I'm Marcia Schneibly. I own this building. Well, the business does. I was just telling this officer here that, well, my warehouse name is missing. And when the police called this morning and said something about someone shooting off guns in my warehouse, well, I thought, well, where's Hector? I mean, he's a diligent employee. He would not just allow someone to come in and shoot up my building. Mrs. Schneibly, do you think it could be Hector firing off these weapons? Well, I haven't said no. Hector is a sweet young man. A little slow, maybe, but... No, uh, it's college, Hector. But not... Rooker! Packmeyer! Would you please excuse us, Mrs. Schneibly? Please finish what you were saying to this officer here. Thank you. We have better things to do. Pup, you deal with this. Mrs. Schneibly, you were saying that you believe your warehouseman is missing? Believe he is missing? Well, I should say so. Hector reports to work Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. He is a very dependable employee. Why, in five years of working for us, he has never missed a day. He shot a cop in the face. Mrs. Schneibly, what's Hector's full name, and can you give me a physical description? Oh, yes. It's Hector Martinez, and oh, he's about six feet tall, about 180 pounds, Clean shaven, dark hair. I don't know how old he is. Um, you know, like I said before, he's he's a little bit mentally challenged. He, he's simple. Well, have you seen that movie, Forrest Gump? 
That's the way he is. That's the way wow. he is. Forrest Gump wouldn't hurt anybody, and neither would Hector hurt Well, Forrest Gump. Mr. Schneibly, nobody says Hector has he, or would uh, hurt anybody. He probably didn't beat me. Up until now, we didn't even know about Mr. Martinez. We're just trying to determine what the situation is. He's a little simple. Mr. Schneibly, wow. would you have a home phone number for Mr. Martinez? Of course, Martinez? this is 1995 well, yes, when they made uh, this. Well, not with me at the Different office. Different time. I mean, I'd, I'd have to call to get it. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Can you give me a layout of the warehouse? Oh, well, yes. Well, it's mostly a big, empty building. Um, we keep it for extra storage, and Hector maintains the building for when we need extra space. Well, that's not what you asked, is it? No, it's oh, not. Well, let's see. Uh, okay, the you building was drop built the to utilize down the tent. train tracks. And so the roll-up doors and the entrance face the railroad tracks. And when you walk in, well, it's just a big, open building. Um, Oh, well, I have some furniture stored in there from when the children were small, and, and my husband and the boys have some mini bikes in there as well. <laughs> that nice face, me. Is it just one large room? And there's an owl that keeps oh, his no, stuff there in there. That may be what caused upstairs. Hector to go crazy. Well, the second room, I don't know. It has I heard some about old that crazy old woman. Junk, really. Nothing, nothing important. Uh, uh, <laughs> I like that. Uh. You said upstairs. Is there a downstairs to the building as well? Oh, yes. I, didn't I mention that? No. Uh, well, it's mostly just beams and floor supports. And Oh, and Hector has his little makeshift office down there. Nothing fancy. That's good to know. Thanks for telling us. Is there an outside entrance to the basement, Mrs. Schneibel? <clears throat> oh, heavens no. No, I had that sealed up years ago. You know, we have trouble with hobos here. I mean, they ra ride the train in the day and... And, and at really night, stop and look for train? a place to sleep. Well, we literally had a that train, huh? camp down there. No, I had workmen come and cement and brick up that. I door. had those hobos killed. No. Those people, you know, they're just a waste of my insurance time. Insurance rates? When you have hobos in your building? <laughs> those <laughs> hobos. No, there's the only one entrance for them. They to went, the basement mm, and went through it. the warehouse. I don't remember if the stairs are in the first room or the second room. Is, is does that matter? It does matter, twat. Mr. Schneibel, is there a phone line in the building? And do you know the number? Oh, yes, yes. I know. The Get number is 213-298-289. Listen. No, I'll just have to call and get it for you. But there is a phone. It's in Hector's little basement office area. You know, I wanted him to have a nice little desk with a phone on it upstairs. But no, he insisted on having the phone installed downstairs in the basement. I bet he did, where he has all of his torture porn basement. happen. Like how Swap Pup's like, mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you can tell me about the warehouse or about Hector? Nothing I can think of. It's, it's just a big warehouse. It's empty, and Hector is just a simple man trying to make a living. I can't understand how he could be causing all this trouble. It's just not like him. Mrs. Schneibly, we haven't determined that Hector is causing all this trouble. Mrs. Schneibly, we've set up a communications post uh, over by the ice house across the way. Could I ask you to go in there and use the telephone to call your office and get those phone numbers we talked about? Oh, well, sure, but I don't want to be in the way. I'll just use the phone in my car if that's all right. That'd be fine. Just get away from me, please. Well, there's more gunshots again. <laughs> they kill purple dress. Excuse me, sir. Yes, officer, what did you learn from the owner of the property? Well, the name of the missing warehouseman is Hector Martinez. Uh, he works Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., hasn't missed a day of work in five years. He's about six feet tall, weighs about 180 pounds, clean-shaven, dark hair. Now, she says, He's mentally challenged. Uh, she's going to call her office and get a home telephone number for him. Good. She also said that the building was built in relation to the railroad. All the roll-up doors and the entrance door are on the same side only. She said that there are two large interior rooms, mostly empty. Okay. Uh, there's also a basement to the building. It houses Hector's office. He's blinking and a lot. Some beams and floor supports. Okay. Unfortunately, Mrs. Schneibly doesn't recall if the stairs leading to the basement are on the first room or the second room. See. Uh, apparently, there is a telephone line into the building. It's in the basement. Uh, she doesn't know the like, number is offhand. Is that an abnormal amount of blinking, or is it just me? Good. Uh, one last thing. 
Mr. Schneibly said that Hector's not the kind of person to hurt anybody, and she doesn't think it's him in there firing the rounds. Well, we'll find that out soon enough. Thanks. Good job. So in the next episode, we'll go deal with Hector. This is Officer Keeler. He was one of the responding officers to the 30 Adam. As I was telling Packmeyer, we get false alarms down here all the time. The wind's always blowing the doors open on these old buildings, or we have transients camping out. Last we have to shoot it was gunfire. Did you see anyone? No, not really. Everything happened real quick. We were approaching the door. It was partially open. Bales went to reach for it. He had his hand on the doorknob. It seemed to me that the door was closing rather than opening. I got the sinking feeling in my stomach, and then wham. Bales was hit, and I was dragging him out of there. As I was saying, we'll uh, deal with Hector in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye now. Love this music. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Police Quest SWAT. We left off. We were uh, about to go into this old warehouse and try to find Hector, who seems to be missing. And no one seems to Briefing think that... Briefing, everyone! Come on! Let's go! He will do anything, but we need to go in regardless. Okay, this is what we know. <clears throat> we have one wounded officer, and weapons fire is randomly erupting from within the structure. CNT's been telephoning the warehouse, but there's been no pickup. The owner of the warehouse is quite concerned with the status of her warehouseman. She and I spoke just moments ago, and she verified the information we were putting together. The warehouseman is a Hispanic male, late 20s. His name is Hector Martinez. He's approximately six feet tall, 180 pounds. We contacted his home, and they confirmed he left for work at 6.30 a.m. Now, it's possible he's either the shooter or being held hostage by the shooter. The warehouse is broken into two rooms. In one of the rooms, which one we don't know, are stairs leading to a basement. The basement is dark, and it consists mainly of floor supports. There's also an office area. We place sniper teams on three surrounding buildings. The approach will be from side four to three to two around to side one. We can assume the opening one will be secured. We have the keys from the owner, so there should not be a problem with entry unless the door is barricaded from the inside. We know it's a large space, so we're issuing two two threes. Bats in the fire, Packmeyer. Let's line them up. We enter and move with stealth. Carmichael, scout. Denton, shotgun. Pup. You're being issued the M16 Beret. If there's a distance between us and the shooter, and Pup has the shot, it's his. Rhea, Wixel, you're in on the entry, you trail. Okay? Let's move out. Now, an interesting thing about this approach is it's not going to get you the best ending to how this works. Now, of course, we are getting to use... Entry team in position. A new weapon, the one. M16. Side one clear of threat. But if you go stealth completely, you're gonna kill the suspect. There's actually Roger that. Ready go. Two ways to win this successfully. One is what we're gonna do here, which is killing the suspect. And two is <clears throat> using excess like force to get oh. downstairs and being able Cut to the door. keep them both alive. As a kid, I never actually got the good ending. I always had him come running up the stairs and get shot in the head. You're up. <laughs> so. But yeah, there is more than one way to do this one correctly. I'm taking a look to see if there's anybody there, which there's not. <clears throat> Stick that back in there. There we go. Entry team ready to make entry. Ready to enter door. Go. Well, it's kind of found it funny in this version of SWAT. You're, you're kind of just in the way. Entry team in. Since you can't fully participate in the way that maybe you would in like an actual live action game, it's like 
you're kind of there while the this all goes on. I think that's why SWAT 4 in particular is considered to be so good in comparison. Although I do like SWAT 2's strategy, as we've discussed previously. The big thing about this is it's a big warehouse, and if you don't slice the pie, and you go in quickly, and you don't pay attention, you're dead. I mean, it's just, you're going to die a lot if you don't wait and let your the rest of your crew do what they're supposed to do before you decide to barrel on in. This is another example of well done FMV. You know, obviously there's no shadows and whatnot, which takes away from the realism a bit, but I still think they do a good job. It actually almost looks like they're actually in that room. Looks a lot better than the original Phantasmagoria, where everything was like a computer animated thing. Now they're wanting our attention to cover. Yeah, this is definitely not the best place to them to have uh, allowed someone to break in Carmichael, here. move up to the door, mirror it, and see if it's clear. Looks clear. Pop, move up! Ready to clear? Go! And like I said, you know, we're still following the stealth way of doing this, which... Stairwell, far right wall, no sign of Greg. Oddly enough, does oh. not get you the ending Cover you want. left. Rhea, Wixel, you take the stairwell. Carmichael Denton, you move left with me. Ready to make entry? Like, we're, you know, doing everything by the book. He's got a little, he's got himself a little, uh, ping pong table in oh. there. Carmichael, near that area to the left. Pup, let's play a quick game. Bet I'll beat your ass. Alright, things are clear, so we can keep on going. Denton, clear the area. Go. This area is pretty clear. I was gonna say, it shouldn't take him very long to clear it. Hold. to cover, huh? We can do that. Clear. Yeah, it doesn't look to me like there's much on this upper floor. I've obviously, kind of, when they discussed that the bottom floor has a lot more hiding... Pop. Ready to move? Go! Hiding spots. That's obviously the place that you're gonna wanna go. But, part of the mission is to completely check the entire warehouse to make sure that there's nothing there, so... Hold. Alright, wanting us to do that again. We can handle that. Ready to go. Wouldn't want to mess with Go. that shotgun. If you've played this game and played during the shooting scenes and used the shotgun, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Oh. Pop. 
I know one time playing the, the first one, I was in the house and had the shotgun and you could shoot the like this one door where you assumed that she was and it would just kill her. It's like, oops. So here's where you can change things up and we will show the other way. I, I've never gotten it to work, so I've got somebody's. Here we go. Shoot him, boom. And that's over. Officer, Sergeant Rooker and I will be attending the Use of Force Review Board hearing to testify regarding our personal knowledge of the shooting incident you were involved in. We do not anticipate disciplinary actions to be taken against you, but until the Office of Internal Affairs, the Use of Force Review Board, and the officer involved shooting team have completed their investigation, you're relieved of active duty. And that's, that is protocol. This is a formality. Don't despair. Keep training with your element. You'll be back in the saddle in no time. Yeah, it's not like a bad ending. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I lost. Well, no, you didn't lose. It's just that you, Please you insert did CD it number with one, force. Then press enter to continue. And any time that an officer discharges their gun, particularly in the killing of somebody, they have to have a board of review. So if you go right back in, since you've done the right thing with this mission, they'll be waiting for you and be like, congratulations, you can come back now. Officer, I have good news. After a thorough investigation, you've been cleared of any misconduct. A thorough investigation that lasts 35 in. seconds. You're officially reinstated to active duty. The elements missed you out there. Good to have you back. We hadn't missed much. All right, so now we'll show the other way. Like, I had to use somebody's, like, playthrough. So sorry that it's, like, wonky. Basically use the lash to tell them to go down. Instead of doing all the stealth, and we can do a, 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 a dynamic entry. But every time I tried to get him to do that, he just got killed, so. Pop! Move up! Go. Prepare for dynamic entry. Rhea, so the, yeah, they're gonna do flashbang. flashbang. Nathan, you're in first. Carmichael follow dead. You go down third. Wixel, follow Pop. I'll trail. Rhea, you hold. Stand by. Ready. Initiate. It's a little different this way. They said it was a lot of just beams. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't be. Can you see anything? I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be rushing into this. Carmichael. Cover down range. Denton, Wixel, clear that pit. And they really didn't mention anything about a pit going down farther from here. They just said there was the second story below. We all move together. Up, Wixel, you take the left. Carmichael, Denton. Take the right. I'll go up the middle. Ready to move? Go. What are you waiting for? Come on. I can see an open doorway. Can you see anything on the other side? I can see some lights strung in a wire mesh storage area. Keep moving. Yeah, that's where his little office is. 
Wixel, Pop, ready to move to the door? Go. We have the dynamic entry. Dinner, your flashback. Carmichael, go left. Wixel, go right. Dinner, you follow Wixel right. Pop, you follow Carmichael left. Follow Pop. Stand by. Ready? Initiate. Slice that pie. You freeze. Put the gun down now. I haven't done anything yet. But yet. I will. I just want to get out of here. That's all. Suspect, put the gun down. Place it by your left foot. Do it now. No. No, you put down the guns. No. Suspect. Put the gun no. down and place it by your left foot. You're outnumbered. Get out. Get. <laughs> Little different ending. We can make this work. Slowly jump to the ground. Okay. 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 I'm coming down. And if you look, Hector's over there with his arms up in the on the left side. Back fired at ten, David. Suspect Yeah. So everybody gets to live this way. everyone take a seat. Before I get started, Lieutenant Hancock has a few things to say. Sir? Congratulations, officers. You did an excellent job today. Thanks to your efforts, we have our suspect in custody. Keep up the good work. Sergeant Rooker? You men did a fine job out there today. Take pride in your efforts. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a commendation or two headed this way. Well, that's it. Get some rest. Dismissed. All right, so our next thing we really need to do, <clears throat> we can do this so we can see that one of our hey, people are leaving. Well, guess what? I'm promoting now. I made sergeant. Heading over to Rampart. It's been great working with you. I'd shake your hand goodbye, but I got my hands full. You know, with me out of the way, Rooker's going to be looking for a new element leader. Good luck, pup. Yeah, that means in the last mission, guess what we are? We're the element leader. Or you're the sniper, but we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, go to sniping school here. Welcome back, <clears throat> officer. Saunders is anxious to get started. Would you like to set up the SR-60? I'm ready. Just lead the way. Me? I'm not really much of a sharpshooter. I'm really more fascinated by the science of it all. But these guys, they're top notch. Well, thank you. How you doing? I'm Danny Tello. You thinking about joining up with us? It's good. We can always use another good marksman around here. Interesting enough, as many times as I've actually passed like sniper school. If so, why don't we head down range and get set up? I've never gotten the sniper ending. What are you waiting for, officer? Get on down range and set up. I have found a recording of it, a very brief one it's not your behavior makes me think that you might need to be evaluated by the department shrink now uh. knock that off and go get set up i thought you were interested in sniping why don't you head on down the way and get yourself set up Saunders you will show you the ropes quit being annoying and do your job we'll set up down here so in this you get now, the basics of it I don't know how much you know about sniping, but I'm gonna begin with the basics. This is a Robar SR-60 308 bolt action rifle. It makes people die. Here at LAPD, we zero our rifles at 100 yards. We always begin with a cold barrel shot. We use a cold barrel shot to establish our zero. It's also the most important shot out in the field. Now, 
first thing you're going to want to do is establish your zero on this rifle. You do that because it's new to you and hasn't been used in a while. <clears throat> you do that, you want to get out your dope book. You want to establish the date, the time of day, wind direction, direction of light, temperature. Also, verify your ammo lot. You'll need to consult the charts in your dope book for any elevation or windage adjustments needed in order to make your 100 yard cold barrel shot and establish a zero. Now I'm gonna load a single round for your cold barrel shot. You reload when you're ready to shoot your first group of five. Now I'll be over here functioning as your spotter to answer any questions you may have. Remember, your cold barrel shot will be taken at 100 yards and you need to shoot a minute of angle. <coughs> In layman's terms, you're going to want to place a shot in a one-inch square at 100 yards. The target's already set up for you. And we didn't get Look, to do anything. I realize it's a little foreign now, but it'll be fine. Go ahead, touch the rifle. Get right up on her. It'll be fine. Remember, keep your finger off the trigger till you're ready to fire. I just got put into to, to duty, buddy. Please insert CD number four, then press enter to continue. In the next episode, we'll do the final mission. So thanks for watching. Bye. All right, everybody. We're going to do bad things, or just basically show what not to do. Or how you can die horribly, particularly in the first mission when the little old lady will just blow you away. I thought this might be something interesting to do. There's a lot of ways you can fail. And I'm not even showing them all. It's like, we're waiting an awful long time. And yeah, there's reasons we're doing that. Because if you wait too long, crazy grandma will come to shoot you. Or you can shoot crazy grandma when she comes around the side. Arm suspect. One, two. Corner. Yeah, she's shooting. And there she goes. Sierra 1 to 20 David. Suspect neutralized. Yeah, the sniper got her. Today was not a victory, but a defeat. We were not successful in saving the life of the suspect we wish to apprehend. Rather, we lost that life and jeopardized the lives of others. It is true that the suspect determines the outcome of a crisis, but it's our responsibility to help guide the suspect towards a peaceful resolution. Remember, a truly successful resolution is one where no shots are fired. An investigation is being conducted into today's events. You will be cooperative, helpful, and honest when dealing with the investigators. Until the investigation is complete, I'm suspending Pup from active duty status. Pup. Today you acted alone and without regard to your element. We really didn't Let do anything. There was a sniper down. attack. That, they don't have a whole lot of different completed. negatives, so that's kind of how study, they do this. But not participate in any columns. You would. That's all. You would get off Dismissed. of this and just continue on the way they did it in the game if you were playing. There she is. Suspect one two corner. This is the LAPD. Put the gun by your right foot. She came out of firing. Suspect, put your hands over your head now. Your training and hard work paid off today. Sort of. We have our suspect in custody. We didn't do anything. No lives were lost. As with every call up, today's situation proved we can never truly know what a suspect will do or forecast how a situation will resolve. As we've learned, we can know our tactics, our jobs, and our mission. These are advantages we have. Today, we had a few mistakes. I'm calling them mistakes as opposed to willful disregard of human life due to my generous nature. However, I'm not so generous as to allow undisciplined officers to jeopardize the safety of this element with flagrant acts. Pup, I'm placing you under probation status. I just stood there. Your actions in the field today could have resulted in fatal consequences. As it was, things worked out your way this time. Next time, you or your fellow officers may not be that lucky. I suggest you learn to work as a member of your element, pup. Learn to follow orders. Do the job you're assigned. 
The very lives of your element depend on it. Dismissed. Oh no, we were bad. There she is again. Because if you go too quick, she was there, and you're dead. You get MP5, it's full auto. She has her cute little like Ready? Go. little waddle when she shoots you dead. Yeah, there she is. Now we're trying to tell them the suspect's right there. <laughs> Click. Of course, what you have to do for that is you have to get their attention, then say suspect. Just saying suspect will not stop what they're doing. <clears throat> right there police officer Lucy put the gun down put it down now yep you gonna put it down nope she ain't putting that gun down nope Yeah, Lucy killed us and the element, one of the element sergeants, not leader. But she, she's probably one of the most bloodthirsty people in the whole game, and she's just a little old lady. I think she's even worse than the terrorists in the third mission. What is it? <clears throat> what is it? Uh, what is it? There's a crazy grandma over there that's got a gun, and she's going to huh. shoot us all. Suspect detected? Yes. What is it? Go! We told you that there was a suspect there. No. Pup, what is it? Hurry is right, Pup. Side three, now! What? What is it? There's a suspect. Move with caution. Can imagine them thinking, Trailer. what is this Take my place. idiot doing here? We actually did bring in somebody for cover this time. Let's let's see if we can survive. Police officer! <laughs> Lucy, put the gun down! Put it down now! Quick, take this! Oh, she's gonna shoot! Oh. Huh. And down she goes! She has heart problems, so use a flashbang, it kills her. Lieutenant? The events of today were. An investigation by the. They just say it's tragic. Lucy, blah, blah, blah. put the gun down! Put it down now! There's all sorts of ways to flashbang this poor woman. Yeah, then we, should, then we killed her. And in this case, they, they just kind of do what and other things like... Officer, Sergeant Rooker and I will be attending the Use, yeah, of, the Force use of Force Review, review board, board to testify regarding our personal knowledge of the shooting incident you were involved in. And we'll pass it. We're fine. We do not anticipate disciplinary actions to be taken against you. 
But until the Office of Internal Affairs, the Use of Force Review Board, and the officer involved shooting team have completed their investigation, well, she killed. A, she killed an officer. Of duty. So you're not. You're going to get off for that one for killing her. This is a formality. Don't despair. Keep training with your element. You'll be back in the saddle in no time. Back in the saddle again. MP5, full auto. Oop, no Lucy. <laughs> and that kills her. Even though you're not on the same areas or this the explosion, you cannot use a flashbang in Today this was mission. Not a vic yeah, you literally murdered her. Cease fire! Cease fire! Yeah, and we just shot her dead through the, through the fence. You can do that too. Today was not a vic- <laughs> well, Of course, she can kill you in about every different way too. It's just kind of sad how many ways you can off grandma. Ram on one two corner. I'm surprised you can't try to do that and she sh doesn't shoot the guy while he's trying to open the lock before the ram comes in. Ready to hit the gate? Hit it. Cease fire! Cease fire! We were just killed by our own people because we shot at them for some reason. Oops. Throw a flashbang at your own people. Status! Status! Pup threw a thing at us. Denton to 20 David. Unnecessary detonation, no injuries. And out you go. You're training in hard. <clears throat> and she drops us in. Gotta slice that pie. Oh, bye, Grandma. By the way, that is considered a victory. You you don't Today get a game not... over. You just have to wait till you get off parole to do more missions. There's lots of ways to, to do this, this poor lady. Today was and the not... game lets you do it. I mean, you you know you fail technically, even though the game doesn't game over you very often. Cease fire! Cease fire! Well, we just killed that lady in cold blood. Today was not a victory. <laughs> but you're going to, you're going to be put on. Now you can, I think you can lose there. If they find, like they can let you keep Lucy, going for a while. This is the police. And then they We've come to talk to you. To kick you off the fours. Lucy, this is the police. We're here to help you. Now stop. Stop. Put your hands where I can see them good. 
This is the police. We just want to talk to you. Now keep your hands up. There you go. Just keep your hands where I can see them. Nobody's going to hurt you. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay, now nobody's going to hurt you. I just want you to walk with me over here, okay? Let's go. Let's walk. Side three reporting. Suspect in control. Officers. And that's kind of the full way we didn't see where they bring her out and they go run into her, so. All right, everyone, take a seat. We're seated. Before I get started, Lieutenant Hancock has a few things to say. Sir? Congratulations, officers. You did an excellent job today. Thanks to your efforts, we have our suspect in custody. Keep up the good work. Now, when we go into the next Dr. mission, Rooker. right away, we're going to show a fine job what happens Take pride when reference. somebody gets shot. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see a commendation or two headed this way. Well, that's it. Get some rest. Dismissed. Yep, and down he goes. So we're going to kind of show oh. <clears throat> ways to differently to deal with mission two here. Back off. Let the man go! Put the gun down! Back off! Let him go! Do it now! Do it! Yeah, so, you know, and there's also different ways that we didn't see when we did this before, but... Boom. That's one way to deal with it. Today was not It's not really how you want to. A lot of the time this is shooting the wrong person and then you shoot them both. Whoops. Yeah, you don't want to do it that way. Let the man go. Put the gun down. Let him go. Do it now. Do it. Oops. Today was not a vic victory but a defeat. Hey, it's our ping pong table. Back off! Put the gun down! Don't kill him! Let him go! Stand still! Back Put off! Down, no! Do it. Somebody got shot. And then they, they make sure he's dead. <laughs> Sounded like the firing range. Today was... And then, oh, there they both go. <laughs> Lots of different ways to make these people fail. I'll kill this son of a bitch, I will! Put the gun down, let the man go now. You got crazy? Huh? Nobody thinks you're crazy. Yeah, you Let do. Go. Put your guns down. Stop. You know we can't do I'll that. I'll kill him. I will. We're not going Put anywhere. Put your guns down. Anywhere. Just let it go. No. Let it go. No. no. Stop now. Bang. Well, and we died. Okay, this is it. I want out of here. I got my ticket out of here, and I'll use it. I swear I will. I'll kill this son of a bitch. I will. Put the gun down. Let the man go now. Boink. We've done that one. Which is a way out, obviously. <laughs> Interesting that he's being popped back up. Oops. Today okay. I want out of here. I got my ticket out of here and I'll use it. I swear I will. I'll kill this son of a bitch. I will. Put the gun down. Let the man go now. You got crazy? Huh? Nobody thinks you're crazy. Yeah, you, you do. Go. Put your guns down. Stop. You know we can't do I'll that. I'll kill him. I will. We're not going Put anywhere. Put your guns down. Anywhere. Just let it go. No. Let it go. No. Stop now. Bang. Whoops. Hold. 
slightly different look here. Compromised. Stairwell right. God, God. Shut up! Put it down! Let the man go now! No! Put it down! No! Help Let me go! Shut up. Put the gun no. down! Let the man no. go now! Shut up! Look Let what you made me do! No. Yeah, he shot him when we shit. threw it. It scared him. God, he shot him. Shit! Let me out of here! Suspect! Oops. Yeah, they, they don't have, like, a drop for him. It only do for poor Hector. I like how he actually goes down there even though we didn't shoot him, he shot us. Same thing there, they kinda, they, even though we killed the other guy, they had it like they both died, it's weird. Then it was successful, it's one of the weirder ones. And then of course you possibly get through that. And that's about it for those, so. Today was not I thought it would be interesting to kind of show all these ways to horribly fail. So, <laughs> stay tuned for the next episode of Police Quest SWAT. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. All right, as we wait for Snowmageddon, that currently is seems to be Watermageddon outside. We're not getting much. Let's get SWAT finished here. Southeast area, code three. Pup. Let me tell you what we have so far. Okay, tell me. The Times City Desk Editor received a fax this morning at 4.30 a.m. It was from a group calling itself the Northern 40 Militia. Oh, fun. They claimed to have taken control of Terrorists. the financial records and accounts of Eastman Enterprises. They also claimed to have taken Ron Eastman, the owner, hostage. The Times contacted LAPD immediately. Preliminary investigations revealed that Ron Eastman never made it home last night. A patrol car was dispatched here to the plant at 7.10 a.m. When it arrived, it was fired upon from the main building. The patrol officer escaped injury. In reviewing the situation, the supervising sergeant called us in. His name is Ross, and he's standing by with some employees for us to interview. Sergeant Rooker? Yes. Uh, the account is here. Would you like to talk with him? Sure, bring her in. Rooker, over here, please. Pup, talk to this woman. Find out what you can. All right. We shall do that. I'm Coco Brown. Eastman Enterprises Company Accountant. Are you someone in charge? I was told over the telephone oh that something has happened goodness. to Mr. Eastman and that I was to come down here immediately. I can't begin to tell you how completely inconvenient it was getting here. Ugh. I was told I couldn't use the main entrance. I had to circle all the way around 104th and then backtrack on Figueroa. How, Would you mind how telling awful. me why? Well, you can ignore her, and then she walks away, and then, you know, it's I'm game I'm sorry over. for the inconvenience, Miss Brown. Your assistance is very much appreciated. Can you tell me what type of business Eastman Enterprises is? <laughs> You've never heard of Eastman's? That's very strange. You must not read any business journals. <laughs> well, for your information, Eastman Enterprises is a very large, multinational I just want to, like... This is just no. one of the many well, this, manufacturing this is just plants a big the no. company owns. We manufacture various plastics used in aerospace. We have worldwide contracts. However, our largest contracts. customer is the federal government. Ooh. Look at you, big time. What can you tell me about Mr. Eastman? Does he have any enemies? Have you not Ron read Eastman the uh, shark. wonderful little he's business built books? He's business from scratch. I'm sure he's stepped on people along the way. Look. We receive contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars each year. Ooh, hundreds and of I'm millions. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who would love to see Ron Eastman go out of business. But why? Why do you want to know all this? Uh, why do you, you know, think? Nobody's told me what's going on here. Why would the police be here? What Mr. Eastman? And why are police surrounding the block? You, I mean, are you that dense? Miss Brown, are you aware of any threats toward the business or Mr. Eastman? Threats? No, and I doubt very much that Mr. Eastman has received any personal threats. He runs around here like it's still a small business. As a matter of fact, there's no security on the premises. I mean, I've asked for security. Don't think I haven't. 
All sorts of people have shown up around here wanting jobs, wondering what this big complex is. You should see the parade of oddballs. You're one of them. Miss Brown, where is Mr. Eastman's office? <clears throat> We're all in the main building. The building with all the glass. Accounts payable is in the front section. Ron and I have our offices on the far side. That would be the left side if you were looking at the front of the building. Ron's office is first, mine second. It's actually a pretty small office for the amount of billing that passes through there. Guess the hundreds of millions of dollars you've discussed. Has the company ever been picketed? Ever had any trouble with activists, unions, community groups? Terrorism, bombings. Well, we've had a couple of groups. You don't have any security. Association with the government. You know, people parading out front with signs saying our products go into bombs that kill babies, things like that. Well, but do why they? are you asking me all this? Where is Ron? What has happened to him? You know, you're sure full of a lot of questions and no answers. If you're not going to tell me what's going on around here, then I'll find someone who will. I've got the factory foreman here. His name is Durham, Andy Durham. Uh, come on over, Andy. Oh, this thank is Mr. goodness. Andy Durham, the plant foreman. Hi. This officer has some questions for you. Uh, when you're done here, go on out to the south gate. Are you going to tell us something? Hello, buddy. Mr. Durham, can you give me the layout of the main building? Uh, sure. Um, it's got a fancy front. Um, all glass. Uh, that's where our personnel and payroll is, you know. Mr. Eastman's office, stuff like that. Um, then the back of the building, that's where the real action is. That area houses our heavy machinery, presses, coolers for processing purposes. You know, we make high-tech plastics, um, state-of-the-art. The stuff we make goes into outer space. No kidding. Does it now? So it's bombing Durham, the babies from space? Do you have much interaction with Ron Eastman? Oh, I sure do. Uh, Every day, There's no security, the so I, mean, I can go up and owner. talk to him. His office is just on the other side of my presses. Well, the company presses. I think of them as my own, you know, because I, I work with them every day. Yeah, that's great. Had to go to the manufacturing plant where they were built just to learn how to run them. Mr. Eastman even went there with me. Together, the both of us probably know more about those presses than anybody else in this lot. That, that doesn't have anything to do with what we're trying to find out. Thank you. You're helpful. You said Mr. Eastman's office is on the other side of your presses. There's a connecting door from the plant floor to the office? Sure. Yeah, I mean, there's the, the front entrance to the office, um, you know, in that fancy glass part. And then from the floor, you can get into the office. Well, at least that's helpful the to tell really us how big, to get in without, is, you know, um, going right through the front of the building. Off the area for the presses. They need special air conditioners to keep them cool. So, like, that area is just for the presses. Uh, the backside is for storage. And then, you know, this guy acts a lot better than office. that lady did. Just right there. You know, I got all these guys down the street waiting to find out if they're working today. I really need to get over there. Um, we square with everything because I, I really got to go. I'm leaving anyway. Bye. Whether you are ready for me to leave or not, I'm out. Was that one of Eastman's employees? You can fill us all yeah, in. Yeah, it was. The elements here. Come on, everyone. Gather around. That's right. Come on. Yeah, we got a story to tell. We're going to go talking about a man named Jed. Okay. CNT he barely keep his frame with it. The Times about 20 minutes ago. It said that the main building of Eastman's was going to be blown up at noon. That gives us two hours. Two hours to secure the hostage, capture the bad guy, and find the bomb. Pup spoke with a few of the employees. What'd you learn, Pup? I learned that this front left we got to go in through the side. Office area. Here on the I, diagram, I learned that that lady was a waste point. of time. Ron Eastman's office is the first office to the left when entering. I think her best friend is an owl the named Cedric. The office is the second to the left. This area houses heavy machinery, apparently some kind of sophisticated presses. Now there's a door connecting the office with the plant floor. Where along these two <clears> walls, <throat> I don't know. Well, we know the main building has two entrances. The first on side one is a glass door. Yeah, we don't really want to go through the, the whole glass. The other is on side two. According to the blueprints, this building has been modified from the original plans. There's been a wall with no indications of a passage put in the main plant area. Hmm. Pup, point out where you think we should enter. 
If you're sure about side one, why don't you go ahead and confirm your decision and mark the board? What do you think, pup? Stealth or dynamic? You definitely don't want a dynamic entry, you All would right. think. A stealth entrance. What do you want to do about high ground, pup? See, we're the element leader now, so... If you're confident with your decision, pup, mark the high ground. All right, let's get you set up. Now, if you choose pup, that wrong, lead, and you go MP. in that way, you're, you're dead. Michael, so, yeah. you know, Denton, you'll have to do it shotgun. again. Wixel, M16. You three will be referred to as entry team A for communication purposes. Tello, you're carrying your MP5. You and Pup will be referred to as entry team B. Everybody understand? Okay. Carmichael, Denton, Wixel, A team. Tello and Pup, B team. I'll get Saunders and Horton set up in high ground. I'll be with you on the lash. Work smart, be safe. High ground one. Side one, two, clear of threat. So that's one good thing about having the snipers there. They can look through the through all that glass and look for the for the terrorists and help you out while oh. things are going on. That's one of the reasons why you can enter this way without getting killed if you have the snipers put in in the right place. If you don't, well, Carmichael, you're gonna be playing it a lot. Ready to breach door. And where you're the element leader, you have a little bit more uh, involvement. Like, you know, the first mission, you kind of stood around and watched things happen. The second one, it got a little more. This one, there's a whole lot more you have to do or else you just die. Initiate. They would definitely hear the glass break. It's not supposed to be doing dynamic entry. Carmichael, mirror the door. Yeah, you rush in, you're probably gonna die. There's like a 45 minute how not to do this mission thing out there of them just dying horribly every couple seconds. Denton, Carmichael, and Wixel, go right. Tello, go left. I'll follow Tello left. Got to initiate it. Ready to move. Go. Oh, this place has been ransacked just a little bit. High ground one reporting. Entry team successful inside building. Yep, so we're going to split up and clear this part of the building. Entry team A, prepare to clear right. Entry team B, prepare to clear left. Go! Once again, I will compliment this game on how well the FMV goes with the, the real stuff backgrounds. Like, for the time period, this is still pretty impressive. Music this time is more backgroundy, not as good. Entry team B, prepare to clear right. It still fits Go. the mood. Like I've, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, like the stuff on the ground doesn't move or anything. You know, when they walk over it, sound effects wise and everything. But <clears throat> considering what some of the early FMV looked like, this is pretty good. Entry team 
Entry Team B, prepare to clear left. Yeah, if you don't know Go. how to use the lash by this point, good luck. Ron Eastman? Well, look who we found. Hostage down. EMT, 1-2, corner. Left office. Stay with hostage. EMT on the way. Well, now he starts moving. He got hit pretty uh, bad. Good shot. Yeah, no Mr. Kidding. Eastman, I'm a police officer. I'm here to help you. Can you tell me what happened? Uh, they, uh, they stole everything. The financials. Everything. Uh, How many are there? The one, then two. One, then Can two. Can you give me a description of them? Yeah. I don't think a terrorist organization only has two guys. Delivery man. A brown uniform. The fatigues. Camouflage. Do you know where they are? Have they left the building? Uh, no. They were... They were leaving. And then something happened and they started yelling. They came back. And they shot me. They're in the warehouse. They left me for dead. You know, they shot you pretty close to being dead. It looks like they missed the vital organ. EMT in and heading towards hostage. Oh. Guess what? Oops. Better pay attention. And Pup's dead. He got shot going to the head. And that's how this mission will go. You just, you're just gonna die. You don't pay attention. Actually, I haven't let that play out before, so I thought we'd do that. Yeah, if you just pull out. EMT in and heading towards hostage. Now, see, if you wait like you're supposed to wait, you don't get killed. Like, you would think, you would think Jim Walls was involved with this, as Move. much as the, the procedure is so in, like, it's got to be that way. I think there's like three or four guys I can't remember and <clears throat> it's pretty easy to slip this one up like you can die faster in this one than you can with Lucy and where she'll like randomly just teleport in and shoot you dead with her 22 which I still don't know how that happens with more fully body armored but shh, that's okay Carmichael try the door Ray to Mirador. So the thing, you know, it's like they're not there if you do what you're supposed to do, but you know, if we would have not mirrored that door, there are boxes on the left. There'd been a chance of people it's like a stairwell leading up on the right. All dropping Looks dead, clear. you know, because you didn't follow procedure. Or they would end up having to shoot them and it would compromise the mission, things like that, and you'd still lose. Carmichael, Denton, Wixel, you go right. Tello, you go left. I'll follow Tello left. Here we go. 
Ready? Go. Heading to the warehouse at this point. Once again, gotta give the graphics a big, you know, even though it's FMV, gotta give them the thumbs up. That looks so good. It's so no wonder I kept coming back to this game over and over and over, even though I was horrible at it. It really does show, like, the real-life SWAT stuff. Now, while it's not I think it's more of a simulation than a game, I still do enjoy it a lot. I know a lot of people hate this game, but I can't. I cannot hate it. I can hate King's Quest VII, but I can't hate this. Tello, hold and cover left. Entry Team A, prepare to clear stairs. Move! And it is neat being the element leader because you get to do like a lot more. Like if all the missions were like this, I think more people would have liked it. I mean, it's not like there's very many missions in the first place, but I think if all three of them were more like, or excuse me, the other two were like this. And obviously there are other ways to beat this. There's a sniper one that I could not get to do. And I looked online Carmichael, and there's only like one me. guy that's done it and he talks over it and I didn't want to put that in here. It's interesting. I watched it. Like, I never got it as a kid. The storage area looks clear. Looks like the snow's slowly starting. Ready to move. Go. We'll see. Hoping to. I don't know about everyone else around, but that. This version of the virus that's floating around right now has really decimated our school. Looks clear. So I'm hoping that uh, we get a snow day and we can kind of expand it out to a, you know, a four-day weekend since it's Martin Luther tomorrow. So I'm really hoping that that can happen to get our school a little bit better off and ready to go because I'm missing a lot of kids right now. It's hard to get work done. And obviously, you know, their safety is first and foremost, but it's just few days away to get that under control a little bit would be nice. Entry team A, ready to clear. Go! This is another part basically, if you do any little thing wrong, you're dead. They'll come around all these corners and just kill you. Or they'll kill one of your of one of your uh, subordinates, and if any of them die, it's also a compromised mission. Obviously, you got to get out, and, and you fail. So, because more where you're the element leader, you can get other people killed more so than you. And that's still just the same thing. You're out, and then you can be put on, you know, extended leave for carelessness. learning the hand signals from the side. All these things are really important to make sure that you keep these guys safe. Hold. Like, just think how many times we've used the lash in this compared to any of the other episodes so far. I mean, there's a lot of significant amount of work into keeping these guys safe. Entry team A, prepare to clear right. Tello, cover left. Ready to move? Go. This is another place where you can get wiped out pretty easy. The music's gotten great here, by the way. It's made up for a lot of the rest of it. Ready to move. Go. I think uh, when we get to this in a minute, people will be surprised about my new grade for this game since I did that ranking of Sierra games about a year ago. Hold. Carmichael, ready to mirror. 
a lot of places to die right through here too. Uh, I'm watching the failure videos. My gosh, they'll pop up and just you're dead. Shotgun, 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 all through here. You know, and at the time this was made, they could not make this as realistic as they would have wanted, so the FMV does kind of work for me. I mean, I like SWAT too, but if you've seen it, it's Please, not great. Your knees, put your Look, your great looking. And lock your fingers now! I was going to say, there's another guy somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there he is. And you talking about someone you got to get Suspects fast. Suspects in control. I killed your other guy, by the way. And of course, since you shot someone, they have to do this because any time that you fire your Officer, weapon and kill someone, Sergeant you have Rooker to go through and I will be attending the use of force, use of force review, review board, board hearing to testify regarding our personal knowledge of the shooting incident you were involved in. We do not anticipate disciplinary actions to be taken against you. But until the Office of Internal Affairs, the Use of Force Review Board, and the officer involved shooting team have completed their investigation, you're relieved of active duty. Now, sadly, this is a formality. This is how the game Don't really despair. ends. Keep you training just keep with playing your the element. missions and You'll be train back in the saddle in no time. And go through different ways. There really isn't an ending to this game, but so here's the credits with some awesome music and kind of some behind the scenes of how they made it happen. So, my ranking of this game, it would have probably been about a 6 last year. I'm going to raise it to a 7.5. I had a lot more fun revisiting this game than I ever thought I would. I mean, if you kind of count how, how it shows the real world SWAT, I'd even kind of score it higher. Maybe give it a 7.5 for the gameplay, but when it shows kind of how an LAPD SWAT person worked at the time, I'd probably give it an 8.5 for its realism. So, and then the music is about a 9. So, lots of really great things in this game. I never thought I would score it so high, but once I finally figured out how to play it, it's been a lot more fun. This is a kid, you know. I mean, even though I read the, the manual and everything, I never could really figure it out. So great job, Sierra. Yeah, I love this music. Yeah, man. It's amazing how well they did with those blue screens, too, how well it looks for that era. I really wish that the uh, Jim Walls precinct game had been funded. We really missed out on that one. I knew nothing about it at the time, so I feel bad that I couldn't help maybe get some money put into it. You know, I don't have that many followers, but you never know. Actually, back then I had that 15,000 subscriber channel, so you never know we might have been able to. But at least we still have some things to enjoy. So this has been Sax Cat, and until next time, guys. Stay tuned for whatever comes our way next. Bye, everybody.